take a look at some basic relationships uh, between the associated with magnetic fields, the relationship between the magnetic force and the pole strengths of magnets and or dipoles and the magnetic permeability. Um, down here we've got two dipoles and they're both considered to be very long and we have the negative pole of one dipole close to the positive pole of another dipole and uh, as with uh, electrostatics opposite, uh, opposite charges attract, opposite pole strengths attract so we have a, an attractive force here between these two poles P1 and P2 uh, and that force takes on the form of a basic Coulomb law, uh, a relationship that's very similar to what we had when we were looking at gravitational fields. So with gravitational fields we had uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation and we had instead of 1 over mu the magnetic permeability we had G, uh, the uh, gravitational constant and uh, instead of the pole strengths uh, we had the product of the two masses but this is basically an inverse square law. Now in CGS units, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that makes the use of the CGS units attractive is that the magnetic permeability over here is equal to 1 in a vacuum and nearly so in the Earth's atmosphere. So that makes this, that simplifies this formula so that we have the magnetic uh, force between these two poles as being equal to the product of the two pole strengths divided by the square of the distance between the two poles. So, um, so this is a, a form that we will use and we will be dealing primarily with uh, CGS units. Now, magnetic field intensity, and this is where notation becomes confusing, uh, sometimes you'll, you'll, you know, we're starting off here with the force, and this is one over the magnetic permeability, and we could have a test pole uh, times some other pole, and we could have the distance between those two poles squared, and that gives us the force. Now, just like we did with um, gravity, we can get a term which is referred to as magnetic field intensity, which is the magnetic force divided by a test pole strength. So F over P sub T in this case gives us 1 over the magnetic permeability times the pole strength of interest uh, divided by the square of the distance between the test pole and the pole of interest. Now, so this magnetic field intensity is more or less the equivalent in a sense of the acceleration due to, to the gravity in the talking about gravity methods. The other point to emphasize is that we run into this confusion sometimes between the notation and in some texts you'll see F sub E, the magnetic field intensity of the earth is equal to the force divided by the pole strength of the test pole, that could just be a unit pole strength, and this would be equal to 1 over mu, again this is we're going to be setting this to 1 times the pole strength of the earth divided by r squared. So sometimes you'll see f instead of h uh, representing the magnetic field intensity and I think you all know by now when you're reading a text or a paper uh, you really have to, to pay attention to the author's um, definitions of the notation that they're using in order to define uh, the different, different quantities that they're discussing. So here we're going to talk about the proton precession magnetometer. Uh, this is just a <clears throat> picture of the proton magnetometer. We have a flask here which, uh, and wound around this flask, on the inside of the flask here, we have a coil of wire, a solenoid. And uh, w on the inside of the flask, we have a hydrogen-rich liquid. That could be something like kerosene or decane. And uh, the way the magnetometer is usually operated in the field is you will have the magnetometer up on a non-magnetic um, rod. 
and it'll be sitting up uh, a good meter above your head and you should not have metal but belt buckles, you shouldn't have steel toed shoes, you shouldn't have your rock hammer or compass along so you should be the, the materials you don't want to have any magnetic materials in the area don't be using a magnetic notepad uh, so you can't be too careful about contamination but basically when you take a measurement you push the button the little button here that sends a direct current circulating through the coil and uh, that direct current then makes all the protons kind of stand up they begin to um, they begin to um, uh, they're, they're all aligned with the magnetic field of the coil and when you turn the current off so if we turn the current off then the protons begin to precess about the earth's main magnetic uh, field so we can see that precession over here now they will precess at a certain frequency and the frequency of precession will be related directly to the earth's main magnetic field intensity so um, <clears throat> Over here, we can see the proton. The proton is spinning. It has a um, dipole moment uh, equal to m. It has angular momentum equal to l. So these quantities are known. m and l are known. And this ratio, m over l, is referred to as the gyromagnetic ratio. And so this precession frequency that we have here is directly related to the magnetic field intensity uh, and, and, and varies with uh, in relation to the gyromag gyromagnetic ratio over 2 pi times that uh, magnetic field intensity. So this precession frequency uh, is, is tells us, gives us information about the main magnetic field intensity. This ratio M over L is known and I uh, should just back up for a second. This when you uh, turn the switch off, and there's no longer any current running through the uh, coil here, uh, the coil acts passively. And as the protons precess, they generate an alternating electromagnetic field, uh, which generates an alternating current in this uh, coil. And that's where we get the frequency. We measure, we basically measure this frequency here and so that the magnetic field intensity then is equal to 2 pi times the frequency divided by the gyromagnetic ratio. So we have uh, uh, basically that the a nice linear relationship, uh, direct proportionality between the magnetic field intensity and the frequency of precession. So higher frequencies of pre precession, higher total field intensity. So the next time we're going to talk about uh, sign conventions and the characteristics of the dipole field. And so thanks for joining us and uh, stay with us for uh, discussions about sign conventions and uh, the dipole field.